Welcome back to another episode of the Backholder Pod. So this week, um, we have something really, really interesting. So the YouTube algorithm actually did their own thing. Um, and a new YouTube channel in the Singapore finance or at least the personal finance space, um, they've surfaced out this um, channel. I think he's slightly close to more than a month old. Um, he's gotten like nearly 600 subscribers and uh, garnered more than 20,000 views already. So I think we just wanted to take the time um, to share what he's done and to also basically discuss some of the very interesting talking points uh, based on the different YouTube video that he has produced. So one extremely, extremely eye-catching title um, from one of his videos. And I quote, how I saved 300,000 Singapore dollars by 25 without side hustles, exclamation mark. So I'll pass the time over to Kelvin and Kelvin will walk us through um, the video and his personal thoughts around it. I think he's, he's not just based on one video. He like, it's like multiple episodes. La. You're la. It's like watching Game of Thrones. You have to watch multiple episodes to understand the whole thing. So um, he it seems like he has worked for two years. So right now he's 25. So he I think he graduated around 23 and he worked for two years. His starting pay was around, I think, 5,000 5, plus. Later on, his pay <laughs> increased all the way to, to 6,500. So with this kind of pay as a fresh grad, it's definitely a tech job. Uh, at this kind of pay, 6,000 plus, <laughs> I had to work for like 10 years to even reach this kind of salary. But then it was in a game company. La. For him, I suspect it's, one, it's in one of the big tech companies. La. Based on just how much he has right now. Because he, he said he has invested about 200k plus he has about 78,500 in CPF. So it's definitely one, one of the big tech companies la, like Google, I don't know, Facebook, this kind. Plus he said he, also, he was also on a scholarship. It's definitely not the average kind of Singaporean it's like Eric that kind of like very smart it's like the top 1% that kind of Singaporean like very smart can get into big tech companies but what's interesting is that he did as a new investor right he didn't really chase the FOMO like most two-thirds of his investment is in uh, dividend stocks then the rest is in uh, index fund I think there's a small part in growth stocks uh, but he never really uh, reviewed it uh. yeah, I think it's very very impressive definitely impressive I think the most impressive part is not the, the size of the portfolio we, we don't we still I think we still struggle to find out like, how he can accumulate like 300k by just working two years right I think he mentioned that he started uh, do some part-time job before he graduated of course got some revenue there but still 300k, just the total income, can they can, manage to do, pull that off? I think it's quite impressive. The other part is that the the his expenses, la, it's like it's almost like you know, saving 95%. You no, know, we are we are in this uh influencer space. We are talking about what 20% saving, 30% saving. Then someone just pull it off like wow, 95% saving. But he arbitrage uh, basically saying with uh parent, uh uh, you know, bring food to to work and then just be the odd one and no girlfriend. I think he's uh it's a way of life and, and not just like just to meet certain uh figures, right? It's just that he enjoyed that kind of living. And also he men mentioned that he's working like super hard and no time to spend money. Of course he he really like engineered his life such that he can max up his saving, max up his money and then just retire before he reached 30. La. So I think it's it's very impressive. I, I really I, I'm a fan now, but that's not a life that I I I would say I enjoy like if I'm him. La. So it's just like different people prioritize different different things. Just, just to add on, like for food, he has he's spending zero dollars. So the, the way he say it is like he brings his previous night's dinner to go to office to eat as lunch. Uh, but what also helps also is that he only has to go to work, go to office two days per week. La. But it's still quite impressive. Like he doesn't spend money meeting up with friends, which is a bit weird. La. Unless you tell me he's bringing up his previous night dinner to meet his friend also. Uh, no, I don't then... think so. I think in one of the comments, he said that um, when they go out, they do things that are generally free, like running, watching, I don't know, shows or something. So um, that's why there's no cost incurred. I think to Bunti's point, uh, he actually reviewed his formula at the end of the video. So it's a seven-step formula. First, high-paying job, save everything. Second, don't have a girlfriend. Three, cut food and transport. Four, subscribe. So guys, remember to stay subscribed to our channel as well. Five, live with your parents. Six, make yourself so busy until you have no time for shopping. And number seven is side hustle. So from this seven-step formula, Eric, I want to get your opinion on this. Probably something that I won't want to do. Uh, power to him. Like, if, he, if he enjoys uh, this kind of uh, monk mode, right? 
basically just chong all the way. It's it's like playing a game uh, sometimes. I don't know whether you guys experience it when we were younger, right? Um we will like basically chong uh a, a particular step. Like you, you have strength, dexterity, and then uh magical power and some some stats, right? And then basically Sometimes you want to chong one particular stats. When you level up, right, they give you certain bonus points to allocate to your stats, right? You just pump everything to health and strength. <laughs> and then you can just bash through anything. So it really depends on what, what you want to do. Uh, I feel that at this stage in my life, I try to take a more balanced approach because I, I don't want to like uh have a very strong strength stats and then my magical defense is like zero. So when when one thing you know, life sometimes throws a spanner at you. And then when when that one thing hits you, right, at a spot where you're not very strong at, then you 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 spin out of control. Yeah. So in game, that's not that damaging, right? But in real life, if you do that, it may come and bite you in in a way that you're you're not really that protected against. Lah. So I don't know. Uh this kind of lifestyle, I probably I think you you chong for like maybe three, four years. Like 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 his his plan, right? Until about twenty nine. Yeah, and then he, he can retire already. But I'm more interested in like what he's gonna do after he retire. Like after that, then then what? Then what is he gonna do? Yeah. I, I think still few years, right? I think what, what he wants to focus on is like just build on the wealth first and then at least give him the options to retire later. So, so I'm imagining his numbers, right? Currently, let's say three hundred K, right? And then, I mean, we just like, you know, just extrapolate. Probably he will hit like, let's say, let's call it a like 1 million before he hit 30s, uh, okay, with some investment return. Uh. So 1 million, let's say dividend stocks, uh, in, uh, let's just assume that he managed to get like, you know, like 5, 6, 6% dividend yield. That's like 60K per year, right? So that really give him the options of like, stop working and you still have the, you know, like 5,000 uh, per month to spend. So whether you want to continue to work or not, that that's his... Uh, his options uh, later. Uh. But one thing I, I want to ask you all is that, you know, like he's saying that one of his current formula is like no girlfriend. And specifically he's like 25, right? So no girlfriend while we are young. And then let's say after he's like 30 years old, right, he's rich now. May, let's say he's still work, working uh, and then got this 5K additional income, which is like, I mean, how many people at the year 30 years old can, can have this kind of level, right? So then become rich already, then look for girlfriend. Do you, do you think that this type of like just focusing one part of your life, which is like building wealth uh, first and then focusing on some other priorities that like, like set, um, you know, find a girlfriend, uh, get married and so on later on. Do you think this is something that is like the right formula or is it like more balanced way? Like, like you should start, you know, like getting uh, like find a girlfriend while you're young. Right? Because you know, like all these relationship stuff, right? It's similar to investing in the sense that it's not like you at the age of 30, you say, I want to start dating, then you know how to date a girl, right? All this also take a bit of learning and then some make some mistake along the way and then need to accumulate some experience. It's just like in, in investing. So do you think this is the right way to do it or, or should he like, you know, be more balanced? I mean, for, for people who are like 25 years old, Curious to hear Chicken's thought because uh, you, you are the youngest among us. First things first, uh, I'm really, really impressed by this guy, by the way, Aaron. If if he's watching this video and you want to make a friend, maybe but we might go out and spend money. Lah. But anyway, um, I, I think back for backholder specifically, the three of them know separately in our own personal chat group that uh, I'm a big fan. I've left multiple comments on a few videos and uh, if you want to know an additional friend, we can hang out sometime soon. But uh, I, I I think the funny thing was Bunti asked me a question on why am I so impressed or why why am I like raving over this guy, right? It feels very much like because number one, it's very relatable. So even though Eric today, he tells me that he has $10 million, um, at least to my at the back of my mind, I know that, oh, I still have maybe another 15 years to catch up. So maybe it's not so relatable. But at this current age, he's at the same standpoint, he's at the same trajectory, and he has like tripled my wealth or something along those lines. And he has worked for two years while I just graduated like a few months back. So then there, there was a very close comparison and it hit, hits home. That's why I'm really, really impressed by what he did. And I think another thing was, I thought I was frugal. And I thought Kelvin was even more frugal than me. And then this guy came out and he destroyed my worldview and like, damn, something like that can happen. You, you get what I mean? That's why I was so, I'm such a raving fan and I, I didn't know something like that was possible. But I think once 
a particular figure like that comes out and then it influence more people down the line, then you'll see more and more people. It's like, you know, I think they say run, running a mile under five minutes last time was not possible. And then after more and more people broke the record, more and more people are able to do it. So that that's why I'm I'm a big fan. I'm I, I wouldn't say I, I wouldn't say I'm envious or what. I'm just really just big respect here. That's the first point. I think back to answering Bunti's question on this whole dating or other aspects of life, like Eric said, right? Whether is it family relationships, uh, girlfriend, um, other things, traveling the world. Um, I think I actually binge watch his content. I'm not a doctor and I don't prescribe how somebody should lead his life but it seems like he is contented and he is enjoying his life he doesn't need to travel the world he said that he's not interested um, I'm not too sure about this love life thing on um, whether it's a particular aspect of his life that he wishes to fulfill so I really can't I can't say he should or he should not but at least for me from, from my perspective of life or how I see people around me um, I do acknowledge that having somebody or having a partner um, number one it distracts you in terms of achieving this kind of goal because evidently you can't save 300k if you have a girlfriend. That's number one. Number two, uh, time commitment wise and, and all your resources will be depleted. But then you get additional things that you, you don't receive, right? Uh, hopefully or assuming that you, you, you enjoy these sort of other um, aspects or other dimensions of life. So I guess it's similar with, with like kids right sometimes people say it's a huge financial burden but then when people have kids you ask the three of them they say that they, they, it brings joy or happiness that will you will probably never experience that cannot be replicated at the end of the day life is all a trade-off and like eric said um you're just pumping strength and hp to your whole life i i, I do acknowledge that by 30 years old he's probably going to be one of the most relaxed people everybody will be stressed of life well this is not enough money not enough resources then he every month got five thousand dollar monthly income more than probably a lot of people they have in their life um i guess it's a way of life that um, not many people will will be able to achieve which is why when he shared his story it got so much attention and views in such a short period of time purely because a lot of people want to live a life like that but they are unable to work out the sacrifice they are willing to take so that that kind of trade-off um, people always see the good side but they don't see the other side and people are not willing to take the sacrifices and that's why we can only look at him from an outsider perspective rather than living that kind of life as well so i think that's just my 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 idea on that I think that's the thing that I've always been saying all along. Like, we're, if you are born in Singapore, right, you have already gonna this lottery that not many people are able to gonna. Uh, first thing first is because Singapore is this place where you are able to earn a lot of money if you work hard, even if you don't get a good pay like him, right. Even at a three k uh starting pay, you can actually cl- climb very fast if you do the right steps, like, like taking on more responsibilities, that kind of stuff. Like like I know for Bundi, when he came to Singapore, his pay actually wasn't that high. Also, he has probably d- doubled his pay already by now. So <laughs> that's the first thing. Principal five x. Yeah, pof so ma, pof ma. <laughs> <laughs> Then the second thing is that Singapore is the place where you can either spend very little or spend a lot. And for him, he spent very little. And for those like people who say, oh, the government is raising all these prices, inflation, uh, food price, water price, uh, everything also increased. The thing is, <clears throat> if we go, just go and check the stats, right? Transport, the percentage like, that Singaporeans spend on transport has actually been going down uh, every year, despite them raising transport fare. It's just because your salary is going up much faster than the transport fare going up. Like. <clears throat> and second thing is like food prices, water prices, if you compare all the uh, country water prices, electric prices, it's near the median or near the cheaper area. Lah. So Singapore is, again, the cheaper places to do things. And also, you don't have to buy a car. You don't have to own a car, which in Malaysia, you straight away own a car. It's a lifetime thing. You have to pay already. It's a, it's a fixed cost for you. So it's definitely possible. Lah. And the people who are complaining, I think there's not much excuse lah, other than it's just you. Lah. You are you. you. You are, I don't know, you are what? Lah. I think what, what also worked for him is that he, he doesn't have to give his parents allowance. So his parents is supportive in that. That is very possible in Singapore. In, like in Malaysia, like if you live in, like let's say Ipoh, right? your parents are, maybe like, they are still working, but they are nearing retirement and you have to start paying for their for their living costs. More or less a requirement in Malaysia. But in Singapore, it's like, uh, oh, you, you have to be filial, you have to pay us money, uh, but they don't really need the money, right? So that's the other thing also. Yeah, so I think he has gonna the lottery in every way. Even even for girlfriend, I have no idea how he managed to dodge this whole girlfriend relationship thing. Like like for all of us, like for Bundi, he I think he met his wife. In, I think in high school, right? Yeah, so, high school, high school. Yeah, same for I think it's same for Eric. Uh, I, I didn't I during, didn't during working. dodge yeah. anything. 
Uh, during the automate. during the school uh during the working day working days and for Tiffin is during university days for this guy Aaron he managed to dodge this maybe it's, to him it's a bullet I, uh. actually I wouldn't him. I wouldn't say dodge though so I think Eric <clears throat> he had the conversation right so he was saying that he basically ate two times in school outside so how he planned his schedule is he eat lunch eh, he's planned his schedule or his lessons before lunch so he can go back and eat and or he eat at home, then he go for a lesson. So I think by lowering your your surface of yeah, exposure. your surface for exposure, right? Um, you tend to have lesser interactions, lor. Really, I guess like, it's just a lifestyle but choice. Yes, he, he has three years. Like even for Singapore, it's it's a mixed school, right? Mixed gender, more or less a mixed gender school. But in my case, the way I do, dosh having a girlfriend in uh in my younger days is because I was in an all boys school. So either you become a gay or you go and meet, meet girls in your tuition. It, it, there's only two ways. <laughs> there's no way around that. But for Singapore, you have all your chances from, from like kindergarten, uh, to primary, school, primary school, secondary school, university. And yet he don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> That's the very impressive part. Like he managed to either control himself uh, from being like too horny or whatever. And he managed to like reach all the way to 20, 25. Speaking of like control, right? I think um, on the investment, investing part also quite impressive right because i think at this age 25 years old i think most people talk about crypto and most those who are you know like learning investing in the right way they they probably do some etf or use some you know uh, some 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 robo platform and so you on mean, right? you mean he's yeah. not doing it the right way so no, the right i'm way saying i'm saying that uh usually at 25 years old uh, if you just don't have any discipline just follow your friends right most likely you'll be talking about cryptos talking about all this the, the the minority that's doing the right way is still doing all these uh, platforms uh, or you know investing but his one is like he he did his own investing okay but he's very focused on on dividends he, he mentioned one one sentence in, in one of this his videos that uh, he said that okay show basically his holdings and then there's one uh, column on on the right that shows that some some of the names are in the rate uh, in few thousands rate and then he said that don't don't worry about this uh, share price can drop right but uh, dividends will still come so, so he's like, you know, just within like one sentence, he can, he can let, like, at least I, I know that he's not worried about, you know, all this stock price fluctuation and all, and just stick to, to his philosophy and just build his portfolio. I, 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 I think that at 25 years old, he's definitely the minorities lah, because I, I would Actually, say most people yeah, would think about like trading, crypto, all these things. There's a reason for that. It was because his mom taught him how to invest. So when you have someone teaching you how to invest, you straight away start at the right path. Do, do you all realize that he, to me, he seems like a more uh, powered up version of AK. Uh, In terms balance. of the way that they, they shown this aspect of it. And AK, you all know, right? He's, yeah, he's yeah. also single. He, I, I'm not very sure whether at the start he was with his parents or not. So basically, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think he also like uh worked very very hard. Uh, but his salary was not as high compared to this this Aaron chap. His his was like sixty six thousand five hundred, right? AK, I th- I think maybe about three thousand plus. But different era la, Maybe twenty years ago, thirty years ago, earning three thousand plus. And then he also very frugal. Don't know whether to this this Aaron's extent. Uh, then I think if I'm not wrong, he also like did like two other side hustles, tuition and something else. So then yeah, lo, all his block income, everything, then he just he retired, I think about 40-ish, 40-ish, 40 plus like that. Then he stopped working already. And then I think a lot of people are already very wow, this guy. 40, 40 ish already retired already, then portfolio so big. I think Aaron will be like <laughs> Ching Tzu Yi Lan. Uh. He will be like <laughs> even more power than AK. 29. My I think gosh. it's like what Chicken said, it's, it's only going to get earlier and earlier because just because like the younger generation see what the older generation did, then they go and follow it. And now the if it reach even reach like 25 for Aaron, it will be around 29, he'll be re- going to retire. And then for the next generation, because this this generation has worked hard to retire so early, when they pass down their wealth, right, the next generation is going to retire even earlier, like even 10 years old, 12 years old. They have all that money. But after that, <clears throat> because the, the next generation have an easy life, the generation after that will have a tough life just because they haven't worked that hard. 
So it's it's a cycle cycle thing. Uh. I expect my grand my kids will have a good life, but my grandkids do not have a good life. Uh. I have a common observation though, but it's not statistically significant. But um at least from the people that I see around me, because I was in university, right? Most of them are in this age range. I can tell you very simply that this whole idea of crypto versus stocks versus ETF, right? Um, from my own personal observation, uh, I, my end is not more than 30. I think I have 10 plus. But from what I understand is for those that have their parents step in to be the guiding light and to teach them to invest since young, mostly Singapore stocks because that's the context of Singapore, most of them will probably ask them to buy DBS or something along those lines of some of those blue chip stocks. They tend to move on to US stocks and Hong Kong stocks themselves. On the flip side, for people that have zero education or zero exposure to stocks specifically, most of them are the ones that congregate to crypto first because that's where the friends influence the idea. I can't say this is true for every case, but that has been at least my personal observation when I talk to people when they are more excited or more pumped up about discussing about fundamentals or talking about dividend investing or growth investing. Just investing in general in stocks, ETFs, um, they tend to have a bigger figure in their life that teach them earlier on. While on the flip side, those that are very excited about NFTs, crypto, um, all this more intangible stuff, they tend to figure it out on their own. Uh, that, that's my personal observation. If you guys have the same thoughts, you can leave it down as well. Um, so maybe it's not just me, but yeah, that, that has been my meta analysis, if I can put it that way. Yeah, but I think one one interesting way that Aaron puts it across was that he said he don't really care the how the stock price fluctuate, right? Even though he lose money, it's fine. It, probably will recover as long as it's a good company. But the dividends are real. So I think when he do the projection, he basically said that if let's say I pick a 6 to 7% dividend yield company and I diversify across, I don't know, 10, 20 counters, means that I can safely project my portfolio to be increasing 6 to 7% every year because that's just surely by the dividends coming in. Right? So I just wanted to see whether this line of train of thought, whether you guys agree or disagree. Um, I can put my thought out first. Uh, I personally disagree, but we can discuss later. Bunti, what's your thinking about this whole idea of... Actually, this is the fundamental philosophy of dividend investing, right? Regardless of how the stock price moves, 6% comes in, my portfolio I can project out 6%. So yeah, what's your thought? Depends on the source of dividends. Nah. If it is paid out from you know, like the earnings, and it, it, I mean, if they have some retained earnings, just pay out, let's say, half of, of whatever they earn, right? The other half, they reinvest into the business, uh, do R&D, make their business better. Then, of course, this is sustainable, right? Because at, at one hand, you get the dividends on your hand. Uh, and then, on the other hand, the companies will still have money to do whatever they need to do in order to stay relevant, stay competitive, right? But let's say if the dividends is something like, okay, you know that the company's fundamentals are already deteriorating, but they use cash to pay out dividends. They started to borrow money to pay dividends. All, all these signs, right? It just means that the core business itself is not sustainable. So it, it really depends case by case. Lah. But it, I, I mean, it's, yeah. About 15 years ago, just before the GFC, right? I think the telco stocks, were also like uh, so-called the blue chip aristocrats of uh, dividend investing. So a lot of people hold these telco stocks, right? Believing that they will always give them 4 to 6% uh, dividend. So, but I think as time go on, right? You realize that like what Bunti say, lor, when, when you pay out the dividend from debt, not, not from the cash flow, then, then it becomes uh, not so good, lah. Yeah, then over time, you see that the telcos also, uh, you know, some of them cut their dividend. Some, I think, pay out like zero. People who hold a lot of telcos, they will suffer. Lo. And then I think now this period, right, where a lot of people think that REITs is pao jia one, right? But when the interest stay very high, or even if, let's say, it go even higher, le, we, we don't know what will happen to the REITs. Yeah. So they are, they are operating, maybe impacted. Yeah, net property income impacted. So all these things may hit like even these so-called safe dividend stocks. So I think even yeah, those uh, banks and everything, they are very cyclical. Ma. So of course, this period, high interest, they're very hot, right? But what if the interest go down? Then maybe yes, we'll, we'll go back to their low points or so. So I think a lot of these things, um, because of the time that he comes in, right? He thinks that this, this is like the norm. But everyone goes through this stage, you see. All of us will think that, oh, uh, yeah, it's by right should be like that. You know, uh, REITs should give you 6 to 8% yield, even those very good REITs. 
But if you come in during the time where there's Tina, right? No, no better investment. There's no alternative. Then uh, you will be forced to buy those REITs like 3 4%. I remember the Capital DC, the data center one, the use was super low, right? And then people were chasing like crazy. Then they said, wow, this data center, quite big, big. Uh. Sure won't go down one. Sure need data, ma. Everyone sure build one, right? It's even priced even more premium than the uh, Parkway Life, which to me was like blasphemy. Uh. <laughs> How can it be? So like chase is chase all the way. Then you see when the reeds crash, you see who has been swimming naked. Lo. I, I mean, I, I also didn't know that the Capital DC will crash so badly, but it's just the way the market works. Lo. When we think that it's very safe, sometimes it just turns out the, the environment changes and all our assumptions is thrown out the window. So I think like Bunti say, Law, never be too confident in your projection, thinking that, oh, this is the way. Past 10 years is like that. Next 10 years will be like that. Yeah, I, I learned that, you know, market doesn't really care what you think. Yeah, they, they will just uh, teach you a lesson uh, that you probably won't forget. If you watch the Spider-Man, the cartoon, it's called the Canon Events. It's like for us when we are kids, right? You have to cry during during doing math, right? Your your parents ask you, it's one plus one equals how much? They say, I don't know, then your parents are gonna wet you, you're gonna cry. This is like the canon event for every Asian kid. Lah. And I think for him, right, he, it's, it's, this will be his canon event because he started investing in 2020, right at the bottom. He has never seen huge losses before. I think he's, he said his unrealized loss is about 20k, right? Then right now everything is almost break even. Uh, and he's chasing six percent you uh I, I, and i think it's a good thing that he gonna this much earlier like imagine he gonna this like 10 years down the road when the market crashed on him then the oh shit my my dividend stock popular crashed by 50 50 percent that's even going to be worse that so right now he gonna this will be better la, better than later la. i don't think it's sustainable as this six percent you give it two years this six percent will drop down to four percent three percent but it, it will normalize back la. actually no way um, I think he started investing in army time. So it's around 2017, 2018. So it's two years before. I don't know how big was his portfolio then to experience the COVID crash. But considering that he has high income, um, I think it's very easy to contribute back. Lah. Personally, I say I disagree with the idea of dividend investing because I believe all investing is, is at least all smart investing is value investing. Lah. So you you like like Punti said, it's the same. You are looking or judging at the company's fundamentals. So if you think that some of these read counters like Parkway Live, CI Capital Land, Maple Tree, all your big sponsors, right? Um, as long as they're running a fundamentally strong and good business that tenants keep coming back, they can keep raising rents, people keep coming over to visit the shop, the economics of the business makes sense. Then sure, I think kudos to those businesses and um, you will probably earn rewards for taking on the equity risk premium on some of these counters. Um, that said, I also don't want to pour cold water like the other three of them. Uh, I do feel that at the end of the day, if uh, that, that they're they are trying to describe the scenario of Black Swan, right? Like if rates stay high for longer and whatnot. But what if the reverse is true? What if everything hot, big, big, interest rates start to go down, everything revise up, DPU recover, rents just continue increasing because of inflation, and then the prices of all these counters go back again. And then as interest rate go down, then start to Tina again then REITs have to go back down to 4% dividend yield, then the stock price have to go up. Then maybe his negative 20,000 become positive 80,000. Who knows? So th this is basically um, the bulls of REITs, that's the argument. And then the bears of REITs, that's the, the, the argument that was discussed by the, the three of them just now. Um, I'm just going to say that uh, I don't know where it's going to go. I wouldn't provide too much of my opinion on where the direction of REITs are going. But at least for me, I'm also starting to size in positions on some of these REITs things, read counters that I think it's uh, a good investment opportunity. Um, but that said, still shouldn't be bluffed by the idea that REITs is it's still buying a company. So you need to still look at it from a company analysis point of view. That's my perspective. Um, and yeah, anything else before we close up the discussion? No? No more? Look, looking forward to you joining the 10,000 subscriber member group. Oh, yes. So we'll see you in the next video and we hope you guys enjoyed the discussion. Goodbye.